So reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 10, uh, Texts 34 and 35. Text 35 is on the board, so I'll just read 34 and then we'll do 35 together. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tasme Shri Gurave Nama Yantarat Shimad Bhaktama Purana Ki Jai Shri Laprabhupada Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Kalachanji Ki Jai Shri Balade Vidya Bhushana Ki Jai Shri Ganga Mai Ki Jai Shri Ganga Mata Goswamini Ki Jai Nitai Gauri Pramanande Hiribo It's the occasion of these three personalities today The Disappearance Festival of uh, Shri Balade Vidya Bhushan Thakur, and uh, also of uh, Ganga Mata Goswami, and the appearance of Sri Ganga, Ganga Devi, the river Ganga. Pratinandya Tato Devaha Prayujya Paramashishaha Swadhamani Yayurajan Brahmadhyaha Pratipujitaha. Translation O King Yudhisthira, after all the demigods, headed by Lord Brahma, were properly worshipped by Prahlad Maharaj. They offered Prahlad the utmost benedictions and then returned to their respective abodes. Text 35, please repeat after me. Evam cha pashado vishnuho putratvam prapito Ditehe Riddhi Stitena Harina Vera Bhavena To Hato Evam Chaparshado Vishnu Putratvam Prapito Ditehe Vidhisthitena harina Vera bhavena tovito Evam In this way Cha Also Parshado The two personal associates Vishnu Of Lord Vishnu Putratvam Becoming the sons, Prabhito, having gotten, Ditehe, of Diti, Riddhi, within the core of the heart, Stitena, being situated, Harina, by the Supreme Lord, Veerabhavena, by conceiving. As an enemy, to both of them, Hato were killed. Translation by His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thus, the two associates of Lord Vishnu, who had become Hiranyakashipu and Hiranaksha, the other way around, Hiranaksha and Hiranyakashipu, the sons of Diti, were both killed. By illusion, they had thought that the Supreme Lord, who is situated in everyone's heart, was their enemy, purported by His Divine Grace, Śrīla Prabhupāda Ki Jai, Śrīla Prabhupāda. The discourse concerning Lord Nrsīngadev and Prahlad Maharaj began when Maharaj Yudhisthira asked Narada how Shishupal had merged into the body of Krishna. Shishupal and Dantavakra were the same Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu. Here, Narada Muni is relating how, in three different births, the associates of Lord Vishnu were killed by Lord Vishnu himself. First, they were the demons Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Janashalakaya
चक्षुर्मिलम वीना तस्म श्री गुरव सो दिस चैप्टर इज एंटाइटल्ड प्रहलाद द बेस्ट अमंग exalted exalted devotees and uh, uh in this uh, chapter we have received many many nice instructions from prahlad maharaj and from the supreme lord lord nrsinghadev who is none other than krishna himself uh descended to actually um show how much he loves his devotees uh hiranyakashipu had asked for so many boons to be protected from being killed by anybody or anything any place any time any circumstances all the different types of uh um matrix of events and personalities and times and places that he actually asked lord brahma to give him a boon for so that he may become uh immortal that he may not be killed Uh, by anybody and he wouldn't have gotten away with a lot of things actually had he not uh decided to offend a pure devotee of the lord uh his big mistake his grave mistake was that he decided to hurt uh, a devotee of the lord prior to that he had done many many other things that were also uh egregiously uh uh bad for example he had uh um more or less stopped the worship of lord vishnu he changed the mantras from om namo bhagavate vasudevaya to om namo hiranyaya namaha he changed the mantras the brahmins started chanting his mantras instead of the supreme lord's mantras i mean you know our situation is not that bad in this world people are still chanting the mantras the correct mantras they're still worshiping the supreme lord they're still doing pujas and you know devotional service at that time in all the three worlds hiranyakashipu had created a very very uh 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 contrary situation uh to say the least uh very much against the supreme lord the supreme lord tolerated all of that he didn't have much problem with any of that but he had a problem once his devotee was hurt so this is a in itself one of the most important instructions that we can receive from uh the shrimad bhagavatam uh the shrimad bhagavatam is the the sun that has arisen in this dark dense dark age of kali to give us light to enlighten us and one of its most important instructions is that uh is that we should not perform any offenses against the devotees uh we should not commit aparadha if you look at that word just aparadha means against radharani aparadha means insulting radharani and radharani is none other than the the lord's internal potency his pleasure potency the potency that actually gives us happiness that gives us all happiness therefore she is also considered the first guru the first personality of uh, uh of supreme uh, personality of uh servitorship god it that's rather any so until hiranyakashipu offended a devotee of krishna pure devotee of krishna he got away with a lot of things but now that he has heard prahlad maharaj lord nrsinghadev lord krishna finds a way to come and uh protect his devotee at the same time not break any of the boons that were given to hiranyakashipu so he comes in this very unusual form of half man half lion and it's just a completely unusual incarnation no one ever imagined that the lord would come in that form you know he has come in the form of an animal he's come in the form of a fish he's come in the form of a human being but not half man half animal 
And all this just to show his devotees how much he loves his devotees, that he'll do anything. He'll come as a half man, half lion to protect his devotees. He'll come in any form he has to. He'll find a way to protect his devotees. There's nothing that can stop Lord Krishna. Nothing can stop Lord Krishna at all. And Hiranyakashipu considered Lord, the Lord his enemy because the Lord had killed his elder brother. And not only just killed him, but killed him in an insulting way. He came as a boar, came as a pig. And he killed, you know, his very powerful brother. This, this brother had not been defeated in any battle. Undefeated in, in the battle in three worlds. Nobody could defeat Hiranyaksha. No one. And then Lord Krishna comes as a boar and kills him. So here it's very fitting that Narada Muni is actually speaking. And Narada Muni is explaining to King Yudhisthira what happened. The word Narada is a very, very fantastic word. The word Nara means uh, living entities or human beings, generally human beings, who are referred to as Nara. And Da means one who can liberate those personalities, who can actually liberate human beings, a person or personality who can actually give us Krishna consciousness, because that is true liberation. Liberation simply to understand that we are spirit soul and understand the difference between spiritual and material is not sufficient. That liberation is worthless. That liberation is simply uh, a destination point which we can get to and then something should happen at that destination point. Just like, you know, we may think that, okay, say the purpose of life was to do something in New York. Say the purpose of life was to build the tallest, tallest skyscraper in New York. Okay? The fact that we reach New York is not good enough. We've not achieved the purpose of life that we've reached, you know, uh, 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 John F. Kennedy Airport. It's not good enough. We have to actually then go out into the city and do something, build that skyscraper, then we can say we've achieved the purpose. So in the same way, to achieve, to, to come to the point of liberation is not good enough. It is simply like arriving at John F. Kennedy Airport. Now we have to get into the city and do something. So now we have to engage in bhakti. And in this process, in, 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 the, in the process of, of performing bhakti, for the process of performing bhakti, the most important thing is to chant the holy names of the Lord. That is the process. Iti shodha shakanam nam kali kalmashu nashanam nata uparatara payaha sarvave deshu drishyate. That this 16 worded mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Kali Kalmashu Nashnam, that in the age of Kali Yuga, it will destroy all types of faults. Kalamasha means faults or miseries, difficulties, uh, problems. All of them, all of them will be destroyed in Kali Yuga by the 16 worded mantra. Nataha Uparatarapayaha means there is no process higher than this. Upaya means process. And nata uparatara means there is no process higher than this. Sarva Vedeshu Dishate. All scriptures say the same thing. Sarva Vedeshu. All scriptures. Drishate. That is their final instruction. That it is the 16 worded mantra that will achieve everything that can be achieved in Kali Yuga. There is no other process. Better, better than that, no higher process. And all of the scriptures, all of the pronouncements of the Lord, because scriptures, dharman to sakshat, bhagavat pranita, meaning that uh, religion is what the Supreme Lord pronounces. What he says is religion. Dharman to sakshat, bhagavat pranita. And the Vedas are simply the recordings of the Lord's words and the words of his followers who are explaining the Lord's words. Shruti, Smriti, Purana Adi. This is the Vedas. And so all of the Vedas, all of the scriptures, 
pronounce that one must chant the 16-worded mantra. So that is the process for achieving the greatest success of life, which is actually love of Krishna. Why? Because the living entity was created in such a way that there are only two things the living entity will like to do. And that is to love and be loved. Those are the only two things that a living entity will truly appreciate and intimately be involved in. To love and be loved. Therefore, Srila Prabhupada describes in the uh, nectar of instruction, in the, uh, uh, in the uh, introduction to the nectar of in- instruction, that the purpose of the Hare Krishna movement is to understand the loving affairs between Radha and Krishna. That is the purpose of the Hare Krishna movement. Why that becomes the purpose? So that we will understand how to build relationships properly. That we will actually understand uh, that this is the purpose of our life, to actually have a relationship with the Supreme Lordships and their associates in a loving manner. To love and be loved. And in loving and being loved, there is going to be some transaction, some communication. So there's going to be some uh, uh, giving and some taking in, the, in this, in this, in this uh, relationship. And so this giving and taking, this process part, is taken care of by the chanting of the Maha Mantra. When we chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, we're actually showing our love to the Supreme Lord and receiving love from the Supreme Lord from the Supreme Supreme Lordships. It is also the relationship, not just the process, but it is also the relationship because all of reality can be understood in three parts. Uh, Sambandha, Abhideya, and Priyajan. Sambandha means the relationship. What is the relationship that we have as a living entity with the Supreme Lord? What is the process? That is Abhideya. And Priyajan means what is the final goal? What is the result? The result is love of Krishna. So Sambandha means to understand that we are uh, part and parcel of Krishna. The Supreme Lord is the origin of everything, the cause of all causes, and we are part and parcel of Him. That's Sambandha. Abhideya means that we should communicate to Him and be communicated, again receive communication from Him. And the ultimate purpose is to fall in love with Him. So it's everything has to do with Krishna. Therefore there's nothing but Krishna. It's everything. Everything is related to Krishna. So here, Hiranyakashipu made the mistake that he thought that the Lord was his enemy. And of course, the Lord's pure representative is of course his enemy also. If the Lord is your enemy, then it's just like a little like the opposite of how we say in the Western world. We say, if you love me, you love my dog, right? So if you hate me, you're probably very likely going to hate my dog too. Isn't it? It's true. We'll hate the dog as well of the master. If we hate the master, we're going to hate his dog as well. So, because of our envy towards the Supreme Lord, we've come to the material world. This, the, the, our, our presence in the material world is the indication of our enviousness, our envious nature. We're so envious. We became envious of the one person who uh, does not deserve any envy. And now we came to this world, and now... The one mistake that we can make that we are here is that we can become envious of his representatives. And the devotees are his representatives. Therefore, one should never cause offenses against devotees. To go to another level, because Srila Prabhupada is so brilliant in his purports, he always speaks from the point of view of the ultimate purpose of the, of the uh, uh, verse. Uh, he also brings out this point that we should not consider anybody else to be our enemy either. Nobody is really our enemy. Nothing is our enemy. We, so, so many, we have so many enemies. We think that such and such person is our enemy, such and such country is our enemy country, such and such you know, object is an inimical object to us. We hate it. But all this is our illusion, pure illusion. None of these are our enemies. If we have any enemy, our any, only enemies are those six enemies that we are that are residing in us: Kam, Krod, Moha, Mada, Loba, and Matsarja. These six. Um, how do we translate them? Envy. Kama is what? 
Kam is lust. Anger, kroda. Uh, Kam, kroda, loba. Loba is, is greed, right? Moha, moha is illusion. Mother is madness. And masarja is envy. So these six are real enemies. They're the ones we should be trying to get rid of. <laughs> They're the ones that we want to uh, uh, go away from and have nothing to do with. So, uh, in this verse, uh, we can see that the culmination of uh, Prahlad Maharaj's prayers, when he pleases Lord Nisimhadev so nicely with his prayers, because he understands this point, that the purpose of life is actually to love the Supreme Lord and his associates, and to receive love from them also. Not just to give love, but to also receive love. We shouldn't be so proud to think that I can only give. I don't need anything myself. I won't take from anybody else. I'm so great, I don't need anything from anybody. That is our false pride. It's actually not true at all. We should be very humble to understand that we also need. We also, especially we need love. And we may need other things too from time to time. But it's all for the purpose of giving love and receiving love. So in that, uh, uh, in that process of giving love and receiving love, we can see that after, Lord, uh, after Prahlad Maharaj spoke, then the Lord Brahma started worshipping Lord Nisimhadev. And what does it say when he started worshipping Lord Nisimhadev? It says, then Brahma started worshipping Lord Nisimhadev, and then Lord Nisimhadev disappeared. It says, then Brahma started worshipping Lord Nisimhadev, and the Lord disappeared. We can see the Lord's interest is not to receive worship. That is not what the Lord wants. The Lord is not interested in worship. Worship, the Lord, in the, in the Dhamma Darastakam prayers, you remember that part where it says that the Lord is not interested in awe and reverence. He is interested in the love of his devotees. He is not interested in awe and reverence. And the worship process is more in the, in the, with the feeling of awe and reverence. We worship with, with a feeling of awe and reverence. And the Lord is truly not interested in that. The Lord is interested in love. So if we worship with love, that is better. If we, in our case, when we do our worship to the deities, when we do our arti to the deities, it is meant to be our expression of love for the Lord, not an expression of our awe and reverence for the Lord. Because the Lord is not interested in awe and reverence. He simply it doesn't satisfy Him. I can guarantee you, each and every one of us, if you try this, try receiving awe and reverence from other people, and try receiving love from other people, and then see the difference, feel the difference. You will feel that you'll see there is a night and day difference between the two. After a while of receiving awe and reverence from somebody, you'll feel tired of it. You'll feel like, oh, I really don't need this, you know. It was great when I didn't have it first and I started receiving it. It was like enjoyable. It was, uh, yeah, it was good. I'm getting some credit and people are praising me and my chest started swelling and my head started bloating, you know. And I became bigger and bigger like that ad you see on TV. This guy, lady gets this some type of a sickness and her head becomes bloated like that. She pops a pill and goes back to the size again that it was, you know. So that's what happens with awe and reverence. But actually that situation is going to be very, very painful. Why is it going to be very, very painful? Because you're going to get all the karma of that person too with the awe and reverence. And heck, nobody really has very good karma these days. <laughs> it's generally bad karma what they have. <laughs> <laughs> so if they touch your feet or if they praise you or anything, you get the karma. If you don't pass it to your spiritual master, you get the karma. And the spiritual master doesn't take it either. He's so smart, he gives it to his spiritual master. Who gives it to his spiritual master? Goes all the way back to Krishna, who is the only one who can really handle it. Nobody else can really handle it. But even he doesn't want it. He doesn't feel good about it either. He doesn't. What he likes is to receive pure love. And that is far more relishable. So what happens is, because in this world, we are actually seeking profit, admiration, and distinction. You know, we're seeking praise, glorification, etc. We are Hiranyakashipu. 
Because that is the meaning of the word Hiranyakashipu. Hiranyakashipu means a person who wants to enjoy the greatest of all sense pleasures. And the greatest of all sense pleasures are described as profit, admiration, and distinction. These are the greatest of sense pleasures that one can feel. Profit meaning, you know, you get all the resources in the world so you can enjoy everything, the best car, the best house, the best wife, the best son, the best father, the best mother, the best country, the best, pres best president of, of the country, the best whatever. You know, best clothes, best food. Okay, and that's what people are into. That's profit. Admiration, yeah. Please praise me. I'm the smartest. I'm the greatest. Who is as smart as I am? Everybody else is a fool compared to me. That's admiration. And distinction, without me, this world won't run properly. There'll be a problem. Without me, my family will be finished. If I die, what will happen to my family? If I die, what will happen to the temple? If I die, what will happen to this? What will happen to that? If something happens to me, there's going to be a big problem in this world. Something's going to go missing. Something's going to go wrong. So these are the greatest enjoyments that we actually enjoy. If you think about it, these are not really enjoyment at all. But by, by our illusion, we think that these are, the, these are the things that we really are enjoying. That these are very enjoyable. But they're not. And you can see that Lord, Lord Krishna became so angry to see this, personal, this personality being like that. Hiranyakashipu being like that. He came and he ripped him apart. He took all of his entrails out. And he really did it in a very gory way. If you look at how he kills Hiranyakashipu, you can tell he's really angry. He's really ripping him apart, pulling out his entrails, you know. I mean, who pulls out the entrails of anybody when they kill them, you know. They just kill them and leave them to die, that's it. But he went in and he really dug into, you know, the one place, the abdomen, where all the organs are, you know, and he pulled them all out. And then he, not only that, he sort of wore them around his neck, you know. He wanted to show everybody that, you know, how much I hate this person, uh, what this person did. How much I am so angry with this situation. And he was so angry that none of the other personalities, like his own consort, his own eternal consort, Lakshmi, would not come in front of him. She became so scared. She, didn't, she never saw such anger. Never saw such anger. She became so scared, she didn't want to go near him. Brahman didn't want to go near him. <laughs> Brahman recognized who this was. But Brahman wouldn't go near him. Nobody wanted to get anywhere near him. Only Prahlad, you know, walked up towards him. With a garland in his hand to garland him and say, Thank you, you know, for, for giving me your darshan. Please take care of my father. Please give him the best destination. Prahlad is so sober that in these circumstances where his father is trying to kill him, cause all type, types of harm to him, and he sees that the Lord has become so angry, he's still thinking of his father's best welfare. He never gives up thought of his father's best welfare. And this is a great instruction to all of us. If someone is acting in a contrary way to us, acting like an enemy to us, we should always be thinking of that person's best spiritual interests. Even though that person is acting in a contrary way, we shouldn't become so emotional that we think, man, I wish this guy would go to hell or something. Something bad would happen to him. You know? So he would suffer. You know? Not like that. <laughs> we should be thinking, oh Lord, please help this person so this person can become your best devotee. This person can become a pure devotee of your Lordship. And fall in love with you. Intimately fall in love with you and become the greatest personality in creation. If you think like that, you'll be able to deal with a person much better. First, you'll forgive him for his mistakes. He's making a mistake, so you'll forgive him for that mistake. More importantly, because you're always thinking of his best welfare, the Supreme Lord will say, this is the type of personality whom I'd like to fall in love with. This is the type of personality who I can say is my devotee. He'll be proud of you for doing that. And you will see that you'll actually become a lot happier in the circumstances. That person's enemyship and all the things that they're doing against you will not affect you because your consciousness is above that situation. Your consciousness is relating with the Supreme Lord. 
So it's not going to become affected. Prahlad did not become affected. He remained sober. He was happy. He was still in ecstasy. He didn't become affected by all the nasty things that his father did to him. You know, the least of which would have sort of completely annihilated us. I mean, to be thrown in a boiling cauldron of oil, just to touch boiling oil with a little bit of our skin, gives us the biggest shock on the planet, right? It's like you feel like, God, I'm never going to get near that boiling oil again. Here he's thrown into that boiling oil. And yet, he's just chanting the holy names of the Lord. And because he's chanting the holy names of the Lord, he's unaffected. Now we might say, well, I don't think if I'm chanting the holy names of the Lord, so someone throws me in a cauldron of boiling oil, that I'll survive that situation. I don't think I'll survive. Of course not. Because we don't chant like, like Prahlad Maharaj chanted. When Prahlad Maharaj chanted the holy names of the Lord, he was actually in union with the Supreme Lord. The holy name of the Lord as described in chapter 8 of the Bhagavad Gita is not different from Krishna. It's identical to Krishna. So if we are chanting in, in a way that we can identify with the Lord while we are chanting, we are only thinking of the Lord and we are actually talking to the Lord. We are relating with the Lord. The Lord is standing right next to us or sitting right next to us and relating with us. What can a cauldron of boiling oil do to that situation? If Lord Krishna was standing right here and I was talking to him, holding in hand, his hand and talking to him, laughing at him and he's, he's joking with me, and someone throws a whole cauldron of boiling oil on me, what do you think would happen to me? Nothing. Because the Supreme Lord is there. He is the one who decides who gets what circumstances and doesn't get what circumstances. He is the cause of all causes. The boiling oil is not the cause of all causes. Similarly, all of our difficulties in the world is not the cause of all causes. The problems that we have is not the cause of all of our causes. It is the Supreme Lord who is the cause of all causes. So nothing can affect us if we are intimately associating with the Supreme Lord. And the Supreme Lord, by His greatest mercy, has given us this Maha Mantra. And actually has given us two Maha Mantras, starting with Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasadi Gaur Bhakti Vrinda. Srila Prabhupada actually described that that mantra is even more powerful than the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. But, because Lord Chaitanya told us that we should chant the Mahamantra, therefore, we should chant the Mahamantra. And also, as Giriraj Maharaj was describing, that example is more important than precept. When Srila Prabhupada taught us this, he taught us by his own example that you should chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra more than you chant the Panchatattva Mahamantra. You chant the Panchatattva Mahamantra, but then... For the, for the full 108 beads, you chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So, if we chant the Maha Mantra in the, uh, with the mood that we are actually expressing our love to the Supreme Lord, we're relating with the Supreme Lord, and we're thinking about the Supreme Lord, and, and we're not, we're oblivious of what's happening around us, except for the, the Supreme Lord or the spiritual master, or the Supreme Lord's associates, that we are relating with, and we're chanting. That would be really good chanting. And you will see that if we chant like that, any of us, we, you, know, you can try it for yourself. You chant like that, and then you feel like, after you finish your chanting, that, wow, that was, a, that was a powerful exercise. And that powerful exercise's effect will last all through many, many, many days, not just one day. It'll last many, many, many days. You can do a trial for those of us who are not initiated. Those of us who are initiated, we've taken a vow that we'll chant 16 rounds. But if someone is not initiated and they can try this, oh, we can try it ourselves in another way, and that is that... Jai, Hare Krishna, bro. Hare Krishna. If we can actually chant, uh, you know, 16 rounds like that, well, even if we can chant one round like that, four rounds like that, we will notice on the f days that follow, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth day, the effect still lasts. When we chant attentively, and we just put our whole attention into our chanting, and then chant like, like the most important thing in our life, that, that something that we can't live without, that, that's, the, that the, that's the soul of our soul, that the holy name is the soul of our soul. And we're chanting like that, with just complete rapt attention. And we're trying to 
express the best love that we can express to the Supreme Lord in our chanting. And just, that's all we're doing. We're not looking for anything. We're not asking the Lord, oh, please make sure that my day goes nicely today, that everything's going to be peaceful, that I'm going to speak the right words, that my demeanor is going to be right and everything. None of that. Just chant. Oh, Lord, I really love you. And that every word is an expression of our love. And every word is chanted like that. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Like every word is chanted like that. If we listen, listen to Srila Prabhupada's chanting, we can feel that. If you listen to that tape of Srila Prabhupada chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. You can, you can feel like he's actually, he's in there, he's with Krishna. He's like talking to Krishna now. And he's relating with Krishna. He's not thinking anything else. He's just completely into his relationship with Krishna. And then if we chant like that also, we will see that it actually affects us, completely affects us. And that is what we want the Lord to do to us. We want the Lord to actually rip out all of our material considerations, our material conceptions. Just like he did that to Hiran Kashipu. He pulled him out by the entrails, you know, just pulled him out. So we want all those nasty material conceptions that we've got inside of us. All of our materialistic ideas, our materialistic desires to be ripped apart by Lord Nrsinghadev. You know, completely by the entrails. The person can't survive anymore, you know what I mean? No way this person's going to live. All the organs have been pulled out and ripped asunder, you know? No way he's going to survive anymore. And then who gives the blessing? Prahlad Maharaj gives the blessing. Oh Lord, please make sure my father's destination is great. So who gives us the blessings? The devotees give us the blessings. So the holy name is like, you know, Lord Nisimhadev coming and ripping apart all of our material desires. And then the devotees around us are blessing us. Why? Because see, look at what Prahlad Maharaj did. Prahlad Maharaj actually worshipped all the devotees. After Lord Nisimhadev left, what does it say? He nicely worshipped all of the devotees there, including Brahma, Lord Indra, all of them who were standing there. He gave them nice worship. And they all gave him the best of benedictions. And then they went away. So who gives us the benedictions? The benedictions are given by the devotees. Therefore, it is the devotees who are for us extremely, indispensably important. And those devotees, we cannot hurt. We can't hurt those devotees. We can't offend those devotees. If, we're seeking, if I'm seeking uh, blessings from Rupa Madhurya Prabhu, I want his blessings... I'm not going to go and hurt him. I'm not going to go and offend him. If I, him. if I offend him, he's not going to give me his blessings. Why should he? If I wanted money, you know, from somebody, if I went to Arjuna Prabhu and I, and I knew Arjuna Prabhu had millions of dollars in his bank account, and I wanted one of those million dollars, and I went to him, I'm not going to offend him and hurt his feelings. What am I going to do? I'm going to really kiss up to him. I'm going to be really nice to him. <laughs> I'm going to praise him. I'm going to, you know, for days and weeks and months, I'm not going to ask for that money. I'm just going to show him my love. I'm just going to give him all the love I can for days and weeks and months. And then he'll think, wow, this Nityananda, he's the best. Then Nityananda turns up one day and says, Prabhu, you know, I need a million dollars. Do you mind writing a check? <laughs> he say, yes, happily. I'll give you $10 million. You know? Just tell me, what am I supposed to write on the check? That's all. So in the same way, we have to actually show our love to the devotees and, and keep increasing our love to the devotees. And the blessings of the devotees is what will give us the greatest success in our life. And what is that greatest success? Love of Krishna. Krishna Prem will come to us because of the blessings of the devotees. That is why sometimes it is also said that the devotees of Krishna are more merciful than Krishna. Because they are the ones who are actually going to give love of God. In. Krishna would come and give it to us. But we don't deserve it. <laughs> we left him. We abandoned him and took off. Well now, the devotees have come. The representatives of Krishna have come. And it's actually Krishna coming in the form of his devotees. The devotees are actually an expansion of Krishna. It's described. They've come to give mercy to us. So in this verse, we can, we can see that Srila Prabhupada in the purport brings out these points really very nicely.
that this is how we have to practice our spiritual life. So thank you very much. I'll ask if any of you'd like to say something, ask a question. Yes, Prabhu. There was one, uh, Mataji, you were talking about Lord Shrimadev carrying out our impurities. In Mayapur, she was there always meditating on Lord Shrimadev there in Mayapur. Right. So she had this dream where Lord Shrimadev came to her and uh, reached inside of her, <laughs> inside of her heart, and pulled out this black stuff. Wow. And said, this is lust. Oh. What do you want me to do with it? <laughs> Chaitanya yeah. Chandra Prabhu is uh, uh, relating a story about history about uh, a nice devotee in Mayapur and she, uh, in her, one of her dreams, Lord Singhadev came and reached into her heart and pulled out some black substance and some real uh, guck, you called it, right? Lust. Lust. It was, yeah, it was actually lust. And he says to her, he says, what would you like me to do with this? <laughs> And she said, you know, throw it far, far away. <laughs> so yeah, that's a devotee. The devotee understands that the devotee is Hiranyakashipu, that I am Hiranyakashipu. All my, my uh, lusty feelings that I have, the, the, the material desires that I have, the, the things that actually hurt the Supreme Lord, and hurt his devotees, is what I am made up of. And we'd like the Lord to reach in and actually pull out those things and... and, and rid us of all those things, then we can actually worship the devotees nicely after that. Now we can really take care of the devotees nicely and relate with the devotees very nicely. And so actually, I remember in the, uh, uh, in the uh, uh, Japa workshop, one of the questions, one of the things they ask us to think about is to say, uh, the holy name is my blank because blank. So, you know, this lady said, you know, the holy name is my bank account because he makes sure that I never run out of money. You know, another, another person was saying that the holy name is my refrigerator because he provides all my food. So someone else said the holy name is my, uh, is my psychiatrist because he makes my mind uh, become uh, calm. Someone said that the holy name is my doctor because he cures me of all material, you know, diseases. Like that. So they were giving different months. Someone said, the, so the holy name is, is my supreme lord because he is my worshipable deity. Like that. So you can actually just decide whatever you want. So they asked, so when I, my team came, I wrote, the holy name is my chastiser because he corrects me. You know? And we think about it, actually the holy name does correct us. If we chant the holy name properly, we become corrected. You see? So, who, the holy name is our everything. If you think about it, what, what is the holy name not to us? And we have the holy name with us all the time. It's like having the Supreme Lord walk with us all the time. Imagine Lord Krishna being with us all the time. Anytime we need anything, the Supreme Lord is there. Anytime we need anything, the Supreme Lord is there. And He can give us anything, not only give us anything, but give it to us to such a great extent, we couldn't imagine receiving so much. We won't be able to even receive all of what He can give us. So, in that sense, or well, not in that sense, but the holy name is actually everyone and everything to us. Like Krishna is everyone everything to us, because the holy name and Lord Krishna are non-different. So yeah, that's very good, thank you. Other questions, points? No? Thank you very much. All glories to the lotus feet, Srila Prabhupada Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai Gaur Pimanandi Hari Hari Bol.